War is an easy thing to talk about. There are not many people uh, of the generation that remember it. The right honourable gentleman served with distinction the last war. I never killed anyone, but I wore a uniform. But I was in London in the Blitz in 1940, living in the Millbank Tower where I was born. Some different ideas have come in since. <laughs> and uh, every night I went down to the shelter in Thames House. Every morning I saw Dockland burning. 500 people were killed in Westminster one night by a landmine. It was terrifying. Aren't Arabs terrified? Aren't Iraqis terrified? Don't Arab and Iraqi women weep when their children die? Doesn't bombing strengthen their determination? What fools we are to live in a generation for which war is a computer game for our children and just an interesting little channel for news item. Every member of parliament tonight who votes for the government motion will be consciously and deliberately accepting the responsibility for the deaths of innocent people if the war begins as I fear it will. Now that's for their decision to take. But this is a quite unique debate in my parliamentary experience where we ask to share responsibility for a decision we won't really be taking with consequences for people who have no part to play in the brutality of the regime which we are dealing with. And I finish with this. On October the 24th, 1945, and the former Prime Minister from Bexley and Old Sidcup will remember it, the uh, United Nations Charter was passed. And the words of that charter etched into my mind and moved me even as I think of them. We, the people of the United Nations, determined to save future uh, generations, succeeding generations, from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has caused untold suffering to mankind. That was the pledge of that generation to this generation, and it would be the greatest betrayal of all if we voted to abandon the Charter and take unilateral action and pretend we were doing it in the name of the international community. And I shall vote against the motion for the reasons that I've given the House. Now, Mr. Speaker, I hope the House will bear with me if I direct my closing remarks to my Labour friends and colleagues on this side of the House. As a party, we have always been defined by our internationalism. We believe we have a responsibility one to another. We never have and we never should walk by on the other side of the road. And we are here faced by fascists not just their calculated brutality, but their belief that they are superior to every single one of us in this chamber tonight and all of the people that we represent. They hold us in contempt. They hold our values in contempt. They hold our belief in tolerance and decency in contempt. They hold our democracy, the means by which we will make our decision tonight, in contempt. And what we know about fascists is that they need to be defeated. Yeah. And it is why, as we have heard tonight, socialist and trade unionists and others joined the International Brigade in the 1930s to fight against Franco. It's why this entire house stood up against Hitler and Mussolini. Yeah. It is why our party has always stood up against the denial of human rights and for justice. And my view, Mr. Speaker, is that we must now confront this evil. It is now time for us to do our bit in Syria. And that is why I ask my colleagues to vote for this motion tonight.